Hi, my name's Tim Holy. Uh, it's September 13th, 2015, and I'm going to demonstrate a few of the capabilities of a new uh, package for Julia called Immerse. Immerse is intended to provide a layer of interactivity on top of existing plotting packages. Right now that means Gadfly, and I'm just going to demonstrate a few of these features for you. This is not going to be exhaustive, um, but you'll get to see at least the, the basics. So you launch the package in the typical way. I'm assuming you've already installed it with the package add command. And so here we load the package with using Immerse. And one of the things you'll see right away is a couple of warning messages. Those are nothing to worry about. Those are happen simply because I've overridden a couple of the methods in Compose and Gadfly uh, for our own nefarious purposes. Now let's plot uh, a, um, j just a typical data set. And so I'm going to uh, draw some random points from a Gaussian distribution. So we'll use the distributions package. And then I've preloaded the command here, just so I don't have to remember all the details here. What we've done is we've just sampled 10,000 points from a two-dimensional Gaussian distribution here. And what we want to do is plot uh, those commands as a, as a two-dimensional uh, histogram, effectively. So you plot with Immerse in the same way you would with Gadfly. So you'd say plot x equals, and we'll plot the first row of, of that big x as the x-coordinate, and the uh, second row as the y-coordinate. And then we're going to use the hex bin geometry. And what this does is this bins all of those data points uh, we had into hexagonally shaped bins in two dimensions. Probably the biggest negative of using this package right now is the time that takes for the first plot to pop up on the screen, and that's really because Julia is simply compiling all the functions in Gadfly and Immerse and, and GTK. Most of that, as you can see here, so now we have a window popping up. There's our plot. Um, so. So this is different. Gadfly normally plots uh, inside of a browser window if you're using it interactively. Um, and so here here you have a GTK window. In many ways, things aren't that different. One of the things that you'll notice is this toolbar, and this is the beginnings of some of the interactivity features that are intended to be added. So um, these two here relate to zooming, so we can turn on zooming. And just like I showed you yesterday, in the or the other day in the GTK utilities demo, if I click and drag over a region, here now I can zoom in on the plot, and I can control zoom and go in a little bit further. One of the things that makes this a little bit different from the panning and zooming that we've seen previously is, of course, notice that the uh, uh, axis limits uh, stay, of course, in the in the field of view, as does the legend here, and they up, all update, of course, as you scroll through your data set. This button here restores the full-sized view to the plot, and we can turn off panning and zooming. That'll be important when we add other forms of interactivity so that th um, that doesn't intercept our mouse clicks. The other thing I'm going to show you uh, in this video is the just sort of some of the figure management utilities of Immerse. So we can create a second figure window just with the command figure. So this opens up a second window and makes it the default window for any future plotting commands. This plots something different here. Let's say maybe a sine wave. So we'll say lin space 0 to 4 pi 1001 points. And we say y equals sine of x. And we say plot x equals x, y equals y. And just to make it more interesting, we'll make this a ribbon plot, y minus 0 0.5, y max equals y plus 0 0.5, geom dot line. And that will plot the central line of the sine wave. And then geom dot ribbon, that will plot the sort of ribbon bounds of that. Okay, and so it's again compiling a couple functions. Now we can we could I could go find that figure here by clicking on this, but I can also do it programmatically by just saying show current figure. And so that popped up the window and there you see it. Okay. Um, so we can go back to looking at figure one by typing figure one. And not only does this raise figure one up to the top, it also makes it the default for any new plotting commands. So if I say plot x equals rand 100, y equals rand 100, geom dot point, then you can see now that this has replaced our figure one, whereas figure two still has our ribbon plot in it. Okay. Um, if you want 
<coughs> to close a window, you can say close fig 2, and you can see now that figure 2 has disappeared, we only have figure 1. You can close all figures with close all, and that gets rid of all of the existing plots. Okay, that's all the features that I'm going to show you in this video.